starting with the further concept students okay uh, so we have done with schedule one uh, we know when it comes to current account transaction there are three category of current account transaction one which is prohibited don't get into it you will be in big trouble right those which are permissible but permissible with the prior approval of uh, government of india but uh, if <clears throat> if you are having uh, balance in your rfc account don't bother about taking the approval of government of india proceed with the transaction and let's go it easy right when it comes to schedule three transactions they are the transaction which requires prior approval of reserve bank of india uh, but if still you are having a balance in your rfc account don't uh, bother about the approval of rbi go and proceed with the transaction there would be no trouble legal trouble in future right right students when it comes to current account transaction, it has been regulated by section 5 and uh, it has been defined in section 2. Right? Now I am teaching you schedule 3. So if you will go through with schedule 3, no student. So you will get to know about <coughs> those current account transaction which is permissible. Okay? With certain limits. Okay? If you will divide the schedule 3, you can divide the schedule 3 into two parts. First for individuals, for non-individuals. Okay? How we can divide schedule 3? Schedule 3 is what? the transactions which are being permissible with the approval of reserve bank of india right but if you are having balance in rfc account you need not to take approval of reserve bank of india right right students so if we'll go through with schedule 3 we can divide the schedule 3 into two parts permissible limits for individual permissible limit for non-individuals okay permissible limits for individuals and permissible limits for non-individuals so see what schedule 3 states schedule 3 states that Rahul as you are a resident of India I am a resident of India you all are resident of India so being a resident of India you can get into current account transaction you can get into current account transactions up to 2 lakh 50 thousand US dollar without taking the RBI approval how much amount is allowed to be utilized without taking the approval of RBI students it is 2 lakh 50 thousand yesterday I told you about LRS right right students so whenever we are talking about today we are going to cover lrs in detail okay <clears throat> but when it comes to schedule 3 it states that if you are an individual who is resident of india we know what is resident of india right if you are a resident of india you are allowed for per financial year per financial year you can get indian currency exchange with 250 250k us dollar that is a permissible limit if in any financial year your foreign exchange expenditures are beyond 2 lakh 50 thousand us dollar you have to obtain the approval of reserve bank of india okay so how much i can spend in one financial year 2 lakh 50 thousand us dollar do i need to take approval of rbi to get into a transaction where the value of transaction is more than 2 lakh 50 thousand us dollar yes that is a limit applicable per financial year per resident individual it doesn't matter that resident uh, uh, resident individual is a man or woman non-working man or non-working woman or he is a minor it doesn't matter that is an exchange limit right they are not giving you money right what they are <laughs> permitting you is exchange right you can exchange up to around 2 crores rupees, right? Around 80 to 90 dollars is going on nowadays, right? So can I say that that 250k USD is equivalent to around 2 crore rupees, right? In, in Indian currency, right? So they, they have permitted following transaction. Now the transaction includes C. The transaction includes a uh, visit to a foreign nation, right? That is foreign country, right? Private visit to a foreign country is permissible with, within the limit of 250k, right? Other than Nepal and Bhutan. For Nepal and Bhutan, you are not going to get any foreign exchange, right? Then you can gift and donate that money. You can going abroad for employment if you are going for emigration. Emigration means you are going to become the resident of that country, okay? Permanent resident of that country. You can send this money for the maintenance of your relatives, okay? You are allowed to use that money for business travel and business purposes. You can allow to use that money for medical treatment. You are allowed to use that money for education. You are allowed to use that money for other current account transaction. Got my point, students? Done. So, <clears throat> Schedule 3 states that for certain transaction, RBI approval is essential. But no RBI approval is required. If I have spent 3 lakh uh, US dollar, in preceding financial year do i need to take the approval of rbi now how you would write this answer you will straight forward you will answer yes sir you have to take the approval right your answer would be that right right student but you should not answer like this sir 
if that 3 lakh us dollar was there in your rfc account there is no need to take approval of rbi right but sir if that 3 lakh you have withdrawn from authorized person of rbi you have to take approval because you are permitted to withdraw 2 lakh 50 thousand us dollar per financial year right right students we have to give the legal answer by keeping all the perspectives right if i'll state forward uh, will ask you a question that rahul is a person resident of india he went for a private visit and he spent around four like us dollar over there will he uh, be treated as contravenor of fema will it be treated as he has not complied with the requirement of fema so now you have to write the answer in such a way sir c if the rahul was keeping rupee uh, uh, carrying a uh, us dollar 4 lakh right 400k usd in his rfc account there is no contravention of fema is involved because rahul was having what 400k us dollar in his rfc account right but if he has utilized a international debit card or international credit card or international <coughs> atm card right or he has, uh, you know, made the payment uh, by using any other mode where he was not having that much money in his account. In that case, before breaching the limit of 250k US dollar, he has to first approach RBI for the further approval, right? If he has not approached RBI and spent 4 lakh US dollar over that, it will lead to contravention of paper, right? right students done so these all are the permissible current account transaction applicable for home beta individually got got my point done that is part one okay now if we'll go ahead with part two okay <clears throat> part two 250k us dollar done one more uh condition is there in schedule three uh, that i am telling you this is the first condition right this is first condition this is first condition this is first condition now the next condition c if you are a person who is staying over here in india but you are not a permanent resident of india what you are staying over here in india and you came over here for up to three years for how many years you have came up over here in india for three years up to three years you're not a permanent resident of india right what you are not you're not a permanent resident of india you came over here in India for business, for employment, or for some other task, but you are going to stay over here in India for about three years, for about up to three years. It can be one year, six months, two years, two and a half year, two, uh, two year, 11 months, two year, 12, uh, two year, 11 months, 29 days, right? But not more than three years, right? So you are not a permanent resident of India. Now your relatives must be staying over there, right? right student you are a citizen of india what you are a student you are either citizen of india okay or if you are not a citizen of india you are not a permanent resident of uh, india now <clears throat> if you want to use the foreign exchange for your own purpose see if i am not a permanent resident of india definitely my family would be staying over there right so they would be dependent on me right they must be asking a kind of maintenance amount from me then how they can put a limit of 250k usd they are putting a limit they are saying that whatever amount you are earning over here in india whatever net salary you are drawing over here in india that much amount you are allowed to spend or send or remit over there got my point student the second condition got my point the first condition is what if you are a resident of india how much us dollar you can use 250k usd without the rbi approval even you can breach the limit of 250k us dollar right if you are having rfc account balance in rfc account right you can use this for any kind of current account transaction except schedule one transactions right right student you cannot use it for schedule one transaction but if you are a person who is a resident of any other country other than india who is not a permanent resident of india who is a temporary resident of india right you you should not be a citizen of pakistan this facility is not available for citizen of pakistan okay so you are staying temporarily for a short period of time over here in india for employment for business for uncertain reasons okay so how much you can remit over there how much foreign exchange you can utilize based on your net salaries right your net income right except tax payable over here in india except provident fund contribution got my point student this much money you can transfer over there without taking the rbi approval right that is the second condition got my point students done done student 
after making deductions and over here what is person not ordinary resident of india is a person who is staying over here in india for a period up to three years not more than three years right done student that is the limit provided in schedule three for for individual done up for non-individual if you'll go through for non-individual there are five limits applicable how many limits are applicable we are trying to learn all these limits over here in the class itself okay so first condition what they are stating if you are a non-individual non-individual means you are a company or a firm oh. and you are very much keen towards education means you are a person who is willing to make donation in education institutions what what you are willing to do you are willing to make a donation in overseas in a foreign a foreign educational institution you are willing to make a kind of permanent chair over there means a kind of permanent establishment <clears throat> means a foreign ngo is approaching an indian business unit not an individual right and they are asking a kind of donation from them okay and donation is a current account transaction right and you are willing to donate for technical institution for academic institution for engineering institution you are willing to donate donate it but if you are if, if you want to make a donation first of all you must have a source of export earning what you should have you should have a source of foreign exchange earning means if you are not an exporter you cannot make donation got my point point number one clear if you are having an export earning donation up to five percent of last three years export earning donation of donation of up to five percent of last three years export earning or five million us dollar whichever is lower is the permissible amount of donation that an indian non-natural person can do for educational donation purposes okay without the approval of rbi if you are willing to make donation more than this limit it does require approval of rbi got my point students you have to buy heart you don't have any other option other than right you have to learn these these limits there is no logic behind it right what is the first limit you are what a non-individual right you are what a non-individual right you are an artificial person. what you are willing you are willing towards making a donation for educational cause right you are willing to donate a certain sum of money to a foreign institution who is involved in technical education or academic education it doesn't matter right you are willing to make donation donation is a current account transaction provided in schedule 3 right how much donation you are allowed to do first of all you must have a source of export earning right if you are having source of export earning it you should be in existence for a minimum period of three years right right students from last year you must be into export business right and whatever exchange earned during the preceding three years five percent of the same or five million us dollar whichever is lower that can be the permissible donation amount for for non non individuals right beyond that is it possible to make the donation yes it is possible it does require approval of rbi right they're not prohibiting you to make the donation what they want you have to take the approval of rbi if you are breaching that limit done done student learn the limit learn the limit in the class done students now the next condition is <clears throat> next condition is if you are a real estate dealer or a builder over here in india and you are having some overseas clients okay um, now how the overseas clients will come they'll come through their agents only right even in india if the people are willing to buy a flat now generally they are approaching the builder through a agent right because agent is an intermediary who is having knowledge of about vera and other laws so the builder cannot ditch you because of having an involvement of an agent okay so what do you have done you have sold out a residential flat or a commercial plot over here in india to a nri okay and that has been sold that is being sold through a real estate agent located overseas possible no student right they'll rely on their agent they are not going to rely on us right now that agent is asking for commission logical he would ask for the commission so you can pay him the commission up to five percent up to how much students up to five percent of inward remittance means the money that has been brought in over here in india 5% of inward remittance or 5% of India uh, inward remittance or 25k US dollar whichever is higher got my point student beyond that if you want to pay the commission you have to take the approval of RBI done got my point students what I am teaching you 
getting my points getting no so what is schedule 3 schedule 3 can be divided into resident uh, no, individual non individual for individual there is a plain limit that is what 250k usd per financial year do wherever wherever you want to spend you can do it without taking the approval of rba up to 250k us dollar but if there is a bank balance of more than 250k us dollar in your rfc account don't worry to and don't bother to take the approval of rba because this is your money spend the way you want to spend it right right but so done but when it comes to non-individual they are our restrictions right and restrictions are transaction based restriction this is not a one uniform limit right there is a multiple limits five limits are there i think the first one is for donation right how much is the limit maximum up to five million us dollar right five percent of last three years export earning or five million us dollar whichever is lower right for paying the commission to the real estate agent of uh, uh, foreign territory how much is the limit that is five percent of invert what is invert remittance the money that is going to be brought in india right right but so so inward remittance five percent of inward remittance or 25k us dollar whichever is higher right now the third if you are taking a consultancy service we indians are taking so much consultancy services from them even if indian movies are being made see the trainer the um, um, you know th those who are teaching a kind of you know uh, those all activities that fighting and all they are hiring the consultancy services of them right we are hiring services of them right their expertise uh, expert people are coming over here and they are giving a kind of assistance to the director right action director they are known as action directors right so if you are taking consultancy services it has been allowed to take consultancy services from them no problem you can take engineering consultancy you can take technical consults uh, consultancy although when it comes to technology india is not you know um, uh, you know not succeeding people right we are backward sometime many a times when it comes to technology right we are taking technological assistance from them right so if we are taking it for infrastructure project for infra like for electricity for power for for roadways for bridges right if we are taking infrastructure consultancy we are allowed to pay them a consultancy fees per project of around 10 million us dollar around 10 million beyond 10 million us dollar if you are willing to pay the consultancy fees it does require what rbi for other than infrastructure project it is 1 million us dollar how much it is around 1 million us dollar got my point students okay so around around 8 to 9 crore rupees right is allowed for other than infrastructure for infrastructure the limit is 10 million us dollar done and the last is last is if you have registered a company overseas what you have done you have registered a company overseas okay if you have incorporated a company over there what do you have to make you have to make a payment of pre-incorporation expenses right that is known as preliminary expenses right you must have heard in art uh, section 35d of you know income tax act i think there is a provision for preliminary expenses when it comes to preliminary expenses they are the expenses pertaining to registration of companies okay all expenses before incorporation is known as what beta preliminary expenses okay so if you are having preliminary expenses do you think that you will have a source of earning over there no just you have registered your company right so now you are willing to make the payment of what pre-incorporation expenses so it has been allowed up to 100k us dollar up to what 100k us dollar or or five percent of the investment brought in over here in india if you have brought some investment over here in india 5% of that or 100k US dollar whichever is higher got my point students this is the 5 limits applicable in case of 5 hai na? that is 1 2 3 4 5 right 5 limit applicable for non individual done done students we have done after the break we have done 2 questions schedule 3 question number 1 the limit that has been applicable on individual there are 2 different limit limit number 1 is 250k US dollar Limit number two is no limit if there is a balance in RFC account. Limit number three is if you are a not permanent resident of India, then up to the value of your net salaries, that is total salary minus applicable taxes minus PF contribution, right? You can transfer, right, students? And when it comes to what? When it comes to what, students? Non-individual. The limits are 
टेन मिलियन यूएस डॉलर वन मिलियन यूएस डॉलर फाइव मिलियन यूएस डॉलर राइट ट्वेंटी फाइव के यूएस डॉलर और हंड्रेड के यूएस डॉलर राइट राइट स्टूडेंट दीज आर द फाइव लिमिट एप्लीकेबल डन Done with two questions. Go through with the same. You are going to refer. You have to refer only my notes after attending the lecture, right? In the lecture, you can cover the study material. I am covering the study material properly, but although you should also go through once, okay, with the text of institute. Okay, students. Done. I hope everybody is understanding. Right. Done. I hope you all have learned the limit, right? So, how many questions we have completed today, students? The first question was person resident of India, right? The second question was current account transactions uh, what is current account transaction and classification of current account transaction that is schedule 1 schedule 2 schedule 3 the third question is prohibited current account transaction provided in schedule 1 right right students but in schedule 1 one more thing is there i think when it comes to uh, transaction with nepal and bhutan person no rbi is empowered with certain exemption powers okay although you are not allowed to withdraw even a one single dollar for making a transaction with a person uh, resident of Nepal and Bhutan, but in certain cases, RBI can approve transactions in foreign exchange with Nepal and Bhutan people, right? Right, student. That was the third question. The fourth question was Schedule 3 limits applicable to an individual, right? Then next, Schedule 3 limits applicable to an non individual. Done, students. Done. Should we proceed further? Should we proceed further? Now I am starting with liberalized remittance scheme. What I am starting with is energy students. What I am starting with liberalized remittance scheme. What is liberalized remittance scheme? Libra liberalized means liberty, right? Liberty related scheme. Remittance means you can send, right? You can send money, right? Scheme means a policy that has been brought in by the Reserve Bank of India. So what liberalized remittance scheme? A very important question, liberalized remittance scheme. And what is the difference between Schedule 3 and liberalized remittance scheme? Listen to me carefully. Okay. In Schedule 3, we have learned that uh, a, a resident of India is permissible to withdraw up to 250k US dollar through authorized person without taking any approval of RBI in one financial year. This, this rule we have learned in Schedule 3, right? And the same rule is given over here in liberalized remittance scheme. But the difference between that rule and this rule is what, you know, with that 2,50,000 US dollars, Schedule 3 permits only current account transactions, right? Right, students. But under liberalized remittance scheme, five capital account transactions are being permitted. What are being permitted? Five capital means under liberalized remittance scheme. If you are a resident individual, what you are? P students, if in exam, they'll ask a question, describe the term liberalized remittance scheme. And the weightage given by them is 8 marks. Okay, 8 marks. In that case, what you, you are expected to do? You should write the definition or meaning of resident of India as well, right? You should also define the term, what is liberalized remittance scheme? You should also define what all are the current account transaction permissible under liberalized remittance scheme. You should also define what all are the capital account transaction permissible under liberalized remittance scheme, right? But if they have asked just for four marks or five marks, what you should do? You should just define the term liberalized remittance scheme, the basics, and then permissible capital and current account transactions, right? Right, students? So your length of answer varies from weightage to weightage, right? If the question is being asked for higher marks, right? You should write more and more content. You cannot give a solution of three, four lines and you are done with it. Oh, I, I have uh, sufficiently described the meaning. You should write it in such a way that a person who is going to read that answer for the very first time in his life that what is liberalized remittance scheme, he should be able enough to understand what exactly it is, right? It should be so connecting, okay? The answer should be, right? 
so when it comes to liberalized remittance scheme can i say that this is a scheme that is only applicable on resident individuals can i say that liberalized remittance scheme is applicable on only resident and whereas schedule 3 is applicable on resident individual as well as non uh, um, as well as resident non individuals right right student schedule 3 is also carrying the limit of 250k but this is only for current account transactions right but when it comes to liberalized remittance scheme it is applicable on both current and capital account transaction right within that 250k you are not only allowed to carry on what a current account you are also allowed to carry on what capital account transaction got my point students and liberalized remittance scheme is open for man woman minor major and everyone right right student what is being permitted <clears throat> it is permitted that in any financial year you are allowed to exchange a sum uh, equivalent to 250k us dollar per financial year right right that is the permissible limit now listen there is one more twist okay now liberalized remittance scheme states that very clearly they are saying that sometimes certain permissible current account transaction are not um, you know possible with extended limit without extended limit say if you're going overseas for an education and rbi is putting a ceiling of 250k that you cannot pay fee more than 250k one financial year in one financial year and the cost of education over there is is around 4 lakh us dollar then what you will do you cannot go for admission in that college right so now for three expenses under liberalized remittance scheme rbi would give you a liberty based on actual expenses so they are saying that under liberalized remittance scheme if you're going for education if you're going for education or if you are going for emigration means for permanent citizenship over there okay or if you are going for medical treatment we cannot put a cap of 250k we are putting a cap of 250k or actual expenditure whichever is higher got my point students got my point what is liberalized remittance scheme <clears throat> liberalized remittance scheme is nothing more than a scheme that has been brought in by the reserve bank of india to make foreign exchange convertibility quite easy for the resident individuals right this limits <coughs> liberalized remittance scheme is only applicable for individual nor individual is nothing to do with lrs right <coughs> i'm sorry this limit is applicable for uh, resident individual man woman even a minor is allowed to withdraw up to 250k us dollar under liberalized remittance scheme all current account transactions are permissible under liberalized remittance scheme certain capital account transactions are permissible under liberalized remittance scheme for certain current account transaction they have exceeded the limit and the transactions are what students education medical treatment and emigration for these three things the rbi will permit a resident individual to withdraw any sum of amount right equivalent to 250k or 250k us dollar or actual expenditure right but what do you have to do you have to put the budgeted value of the fees from that institution where you are going to take admission right you need to prove you have to produce the documented proofs right without documents do you think that they will permit you to withdraw the amount answer would be no right right students so you have to come with the estimated fees from the institution for where you are willing to take the admission or you have to come with the estimated budget of your medical treatment given by an authorized doctor overseas right or you have to come with the proper budget issued by emigration officer over there right if you are coming with the documentation they will allow the authorized person to release such amount of foreign exchange which can be more than 250k us dollar based on your need and requirement got my point students done that is what liberalized remittance scheme now i am telling you see the private visit the gift donation going abroad for employment emigration c right remittance of any amount of foreign exchange outside india in exchange or in excess of limit may be allowed only towards medic uh, meeting incidental expenditure related with what emigration right more than 250k us dollar right right students 250k but for amount exceeding the above limit authorized uh, dealer may release foreign exchange under general permission based on estimation given by the doctor right right students 
right now 250k but more than 250k <coughs> can be released right based on estimation given by the college right right students now permissible capital account transaction see five uh, permissible capital account transactions are there through liberalized remittance scheme students you can acquire an immovable property overseas what you can acquire if you are willing to acquire an immovable property overseas, can you use that LRS amount? Answer would be yes. You are allowed to use LRS amount subject to certain regulation pertaining to how to acquire a property overseas. You have to follow that regulation. But this money you can use for acquiring immovable property. Got my point? Second, you can go there and open your bank account, for an exchange bank account over there by using this amount. Got my point? That is the second permissible capital. Opening a cap, opening a bank account will lead to creation of asset over there, right? <coughs> Acquiring a flat over there will lead to <coughs> creation of asset over there, right? You can extend a foreign exchange loan or Indian currency loan to a person resident outside India if he is your relative, okay? You can lend money to relative by using this 250k. Got my point, students? The fourth one is you can make foreign di overseas direct investment. What you can make? overseas that means you can acquire a company over there you can acquire a business over there by using this 250k okay you can make foreign portfolio investment what you can make overseas portfolio investment you know now yesterday i told you the difference between portfolio investment and direct investment see when it comes to direct investment your interest on investing in the company would be you are willing to acquire their equity stake permanently what is your intention in odi students you are willing to acquire their control permanently okay in shark tank what they are doing they are acquiring their equity perpetually permanently not on the basis of what period of time right but if i am making investment in stock market do i am willing to acquire their control no i am willing to acquire the profits right my intention is like if in future the share prices will increase i'll sell it out and i'll book the profit right so that is known as what student portfolio investment that is known as what portfolio portfolio investment is also an equity investment but the investor is not intended to acquire control he is intended to acquire the profit right but in <clears throat> direct investment the investor is more willing to acquire the control right or incidentally he is going to earn the profit but definitely he is willing to acquire what long run control got my point students done so both odi and opi is permissible under lrs okay so how many transactions are permissible under lrs five five capital account transaction the one is acquisition of immovable property right the second one is opening of bank account the next one is extending loan to the relative right the next one is opi the next one is odi got my point students done with lrs done <clears throat> done students so go through with lrs i am and ask doubts if you are having online students hope you guys are getting everything in case of any doubt please feel free to ask don't talk students go through grow go through the study material okay yes but opi and odi the opi is overseas portfolio investment if you're making investment by using in the money or some other application which is facilitating making foreign investment in a stock market okay so if you are making stock market investment in overseas stock market you are not making investment in indian company you are acquiring equity share preference share debenture bond or security of a company located outside india where your core interest of making investment is to either earn the interest income or to book the profit in case your investment will be increased up okay so that is known as what students portfolio investment your interest is not to acquire control your interest is not to acquire voting right what is your interest is to earn profit to book profit right to take the benefit of market fluctuations right Although it is also an equity investment, incidentally you are going to get the control, but you are not willing to exercise your voting right. This investment is an investment for time being, right? We can say that foreign portfolio investor is a fair weather friend, right? Whereas lifetime friend is whom? ODI, right? Overseas direct investment. Whether there will be a loss, he'll stay with you. Where there will be a profit, he'll be definitely there with you. 
okay that is what oti got my point students done for this capital this is 250k no 250k only with by using that 250k it's up to you what kind of transaction you are willing to do if you want to spend that entire 250k in a private visit do spend right if you want to make investment in immovable property do invest right this is a flat limit of 250k applicable for all together for all the transactions right what you mean for current account transaction limit is 250k only only for three current account transactions limit has been increased up for education for medical treatment and for immigration, immigration. got for that you can withdraw more than 250k based on actual expenditure right right students it's a capital account transaction beta if you're extending loan over there that will create an asset for you right if i'm giving you a loan it is liability for you right but for me it is an asset right so creation of asset or creation of liability is the true test of determining whether it is a capital or a current account transaction right right students no lrs is not being finished one more um, uh, theory is there when it comes to lrs <clears throat> now i'm telling you in this paragraph students okay they have uh, they have explained the prohibited transaction under lrs what they have explained in one single paragraph there are certain prohibited transaction through lrs what what they have explained what prohibitions under LRS, the transaction can be divided into three parts. Permissible current account transaction with limits, right? Permissible capital account transaction, right? Right? Limit is same. For, for capital account transaction and for current account transaction, limit is 250k only, right? Means you are allowed to withdraw up to 250k. It's up to you whether you want to spend it over current account transaction or you are willing to spend it on capital account transaction, right? The limit is same, right, students? Beyond that limit, is it permissible to get into transaction? Yes or no? Yes or no? It's permissible. For three things, you need not to take approval of RBI. But be other than three things, what do you have to do? You have to take approval of RBI, right? Do they disallow you to make transaction more than 250K? Can they disallow you? No. All business units who are getting into imports, they are making a payment of more than millions of us dollars over that right so they are permitted but they have to take approval from rbi right right student for making the bill payments right right students so they are just restricted it they are not prohibited it prohibited is what only schedule one there is a difference between prohibition and restriction right restriction it is permissible with certain conditions right prohibition it is not at all permissible in any condition right right students done so going ahead with exception if you'll go ahead with exception i have made it in my note c i have made this point if this this is current account transaction right prohibited current account transaction i have written right i have even put the example so that you guys can be able to understand what is the point all about okay now uh, c permissible for individual permissible for non-individual limit has been given lrs right permissible capital account transaction c prohibited right right students can you see can you see so suppose in we are usually staying with families right so i am having my son in my family my wife is in is there in my family so what i can do RBI has allowed me to withdraw up to 250k US dollar per financial year, right? But my wife is depend up, dependent upon me. My son is dependent upon me, right? So what I'll say, say uh, I'll say uh, to my wife and my son, see, I need 7 uh, like 50,000 US dollar to open a bank account overseas, okay? I need to have that much cash in my bank account. So definitely they'll sign the documents and I can withdraw 250K for me, 250K for my wife, 250K for my son, right? 
right student i can use it in such a way na limit is applicable on individual limit is not applicable on family all together right my entire family having three member can withdraw up to 750000 like us dollar per financial year right right students but now they are putting a prohibition they are saying if you want to utilize the limit of family members you have to open a bank account over there with their co ownership name means with joint names okay so if i want to open a foreign exchange account can i open by using lrs limit yes it is a permissible capital account transaction but if i want to deposit more than 250k us dollar in it can i deposit it yes i can deposit it if i am having foreign exchange balance right if not then i can deposit individually how much beta that is 2 lakh 50000 right us dollar if i want to use the limit of my son or my wife what i have to do i have to make them joint holder of that account right if they are not the joint holder i cannot utilize their limit to deposit that sum of money in the bank account overseas got my point the first prohibition got got my point that is known as what clubbing clubbing is not allowed until and unless with whom i am getting into clubbing arrangement is having co joint status or joint holding in that account overseas okay so if i want to utilize my son's uh, limit of 250k what i have to do i have to make him the joint holder of that account overseas if he is a joint holder i can use his limit if he is not a joint holder i cannot use his limit got my point and i am damn sure institute is going to ask this question if it comes to lrs because nowadays what institute is doing you know they are asking questions that has never been asked by them okay so the, they have asked all kinds of question from lrs that permissible capital account transaction permissible current account transaction but they haven't asked yet what this prohibited liberalized remittance scheme transactions got my point so first prohibition is what clubbing is not allowed until and unless the family member is what the joint holder in the bank account got my point students got my point second if you want to acquire a movable property you can acquire right can you acquire a movable property by using lrs limit students yes or no Yes or no? We can acquire a movable property, but they are clearly stating that they are subject matter of regulation by RBI. So, if RBI will disallow you that you cannot acquire property in Pakistan, you cannot use that two fifty k US dollar to acquire any movable property in Pakistan, right? If they will not allow you to acquire a property in Nepal and Bhutan by using this money, you cannot use it. For acquiring immovable property in Nepal and Bhutan means just by complying with the requirement of LRS, you cannot acquire immovable property overseas. You have to comply with other requirements as well. Got my point? The second prohibition. Got my point, students? Done. Now they are saying if you are willing to gift, if you are willing to gift outside India, gifting is allowed by using LRS, right? but they are clearly stating that that if you are willing to make a gift to nri in cash right what what you are willing to do you are not willing to give them a property you are not willing to give them ornaments okay you are not willing to give them commodity you are willing to give them hard currency you cannot gift currency for an exchange uh, by using lrs limit okay if you want to give them currency you can give them what indian currency you cannot donate or gift to them what students you cannot give to the relative what for an exchange by using what beta got my point so t when we will divide lrs the question can be the question can be what is liberalized remittance scheme right students permissible current account transaction permissible capital account transaction and the last question would be what student prohibited transactions by using lrs limit how many transactions are been prohibited as students three the first one is what clubbing of lrs limit with the family member is not allowed until and unless while depositing the amount in the bank account they are the joint holders right <coughs> right students the second is you cannot acquire immovable property until and unless <coughs> you are complying with the other requirement of acquiring immovable property the third one is you cannot gift for an exchange right you cannot gift 
quadrant. How many questions we have done? Let's make a list of questions. Right, student? My handwriting is very nice. Okay. So, what was the first question? What was the first question that we have studied in day one? What? Why FEMA? Right? Right? The second question is what? FEMA versus FERA. Right? The third question is what? subject matter of FEMA that is matters which is being part of FEMA right the fourth one is regulatory framework of FEMA right framework of FEMA right then fifth is objective I haven't covered in the class right right the next one is next definitions in definitions, we have done with so many definitions, right? The first definition was authorized person, then export, then currency notes, right? Right, students. Then next, next, foreign exchange versus foreign security. It should be the seventh question, right? Eighth question is person resident of India, right? Right? The next one, next one should be, which question it was? Eighth, no, ninth question. Ninth is uh, repartiation, right? What is repartiation? Can anyone help me out with the definition or meaning of repartiation? What was repartiation? Brought the money, surrender it to the authorized person and leave with a smile, right? The second one is what? <laughs> deposit that sum of money in uh, an account maintained with authorized person met out your debts right right but the next one is a special director's appeal right right students very nice handwriting right you should appreciate right yes or no the next one is current account transaction current account transaction may we have done with schedule 1 schedule 2 schedule 3 read with section 2 read with section 5 right and we are unable to define the term current account transaction without taking the help of capital account transaction. first we have to define the capital account transaction then in support of capital account transaction with the help of examples we can define the current account transaction then we have done with what no we have done with schedule 3 right in schedule 3 we have done with permissible for individual right permissible limit for individual permissible limit for non-individual right students right right permissible limit for individual is 250k right permissible limit for non-individual is 5 million uh, 5 million 10 million 1 million 100k and 25k right with 5555% limit, right? Only in one first case, it was lower, right? 1%, one percent. I had made a mistake, 1% and other cases where it is 5%, right? Right? And whenever it comes to 5%, it is more, right? Whichever is more, right? Right, students. The next one is, uh, this is 12, 13th is both. LRS under LRS how many questions we have done three questions right what is LRS permissible current account transaction right permissible capital account transaction and prohibited right students and here we have done with what a very important part of FEMA today I'll not proceed with capital account transaction today we will cover the currency related provisions okay students right because capital account transaction is little was so we will cover it in the later lectures okay done in these questions do you have any kind of doubt students no na see i have covered the currency related provisions right right students so we will cover today currency related provisions and if time permits then i'll cover the authorized person as well okay students So I'm taking two minutes time, then I'll start with the currency related provision, giving you one question, write it down and let me know. I'll check how you will write the answer. Okay, write one question. Mr. Rahul is 
willing to go for an education abroad likho mr rahul this is a case study okay mr rahul is willing to go for an mba program abroad mr rahul is willing to go for an mba program to pursue an mba program abroad the estimated fees of college is around 3 lakh us dollar annually how mr rahul can proceed to pay the fee proceed to pay the fee write the answer and submit and those who are online students can submit the picture of their answer okay the start writing the answer question is of 3 marks giving you around 4 minutes to solve the answer okay done students time is over beta <laughs> done when it comes to cs papers no students paper is quite very lengthy you find short of time while writing the paper okay around 6 fours are 24 to 25 questions they are asking in one single paper because total of six questions you have to attempt and each one question is been divided into three to four part and sometimes even in five parts so time you have to manage should i write the answer for you students should i write should i write the answer okay so when it comes to case studies how i am just giving you a solution after that i'll check how you have written the answer okay so whenever it comes to the case studies no beta this is case study based question they are application based question what they have given you they have given you an hypothetical question uh, situation where they are expecting you to be a judge right what they are expecting you they are expecting you to act as a judge and give the solution of this practical query right so how you should write the answer first of all you should write the applicable provision what you should write students applicable provision what provisions will be applicable see over here please write afterwards okay see over here applicable provision would be what student i think schedule 3 right as provided under fema 1999 right and including what beta lrs provisions right right students right by reading your applicable provision they would understood very well that they the student has put so much hard work in understanding the law concerned law right so that's why he is you know come up with the name of the schedule as well right now i'll write the provision okay the legal provision what the legal provision states students when it comes to right when it comes to education expenses right right abroad they are they are classified as करेंट अकाउंट ट्रांजेक्शन राइट बच्चों ट्रांजेक्शन अंडर सेक्शन टू राइट बच्चों राइट एंड दे आर परमिसेबल राइट विद द अप्रूवल ऑफ आरबीआई राइट राइट स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ आरबीआई राइट अंडर शेड्यूल थ्री राइट 
right students it requires rbi approval right but no rbi approval is required right is required when it is not required students condition number a when it is not required when the expense is done by using our rfc balance right right students b education expenditure right i have to focus on education only right for education expenditure up to usd 250k or actual expenditure estimated right did by college or institution right right abroad this is what my legal provision now i'll give the conclusion right students right what would be my conclusion as per above provision right students as per above provision right mr rahul has to bear an annual fee right of rupees rupees or not us dollar 3 300k right right he is meeting with with condition b right right so he can pay the fees right students the fees by using banking channels right right students normal banking channel right banking channel without taking any approval of rbi right right bachcho taking any approval of rbi how many of you has written the answer like this have you written like this almost almost you have written done so whenever it comes to case laws how you should write your answer first of all what you should write the applicable provision if you heard the schedule number section number or something that's well and good if not then put the name of the law applicable provision of this law right the second should be what the provision should be written as it is right whatever is being applicable right and then you should derive a conclusion got my point students done done hope you are able to understand my handwriting right understood no <laughs> able to it's it's quite legible right it's readable done so should we go ahead with currency related provisions now i'm checking the answer give me whomsoever has written an answer confidently show me your answer patta pat fast Yeah, I'm showing you the answer. This is the answer. Even I'll share. I'll arrange to share this in group. He has written just liberalized remittance scheme. But that is being covered in Schedule 3 as well, right? Education is a permissible expenditure in Schedule 3. It has been clearly written, right? Good attempt. Hope it is visible students to you. I share the PDF of this answer, okay, in the group. Should we proceed student with the next topic, currency related transactions? Should we start currency related provisions? See after this there is a capital account transaction provided right here what they have provided the next topic is capital account transaction we are not going to cover capital account transaction because otherwise it will start you know uh, confusing right 
because today we have done with current account transaction that is why i am not covering capital account transaction today because it is quite intense okay i am proceeding further with what students currency related provisions okay c the very next topic after capital account transaction is it visible students is it visible visible no is it visible now visible <laughs> now is it visible right so start uh, we'll start it uh, now when it comes to realization repartition and surrender of foreign currency in the very beginning in the very first lecture of mine i told you very clearly when it comes to a person resident of india it is his statutory obligation right it is his statutory obligation that without a necessary delay right if you own some foreign exchange how you can own a foreign exchange you may got it from inheritance you may have earned it through exports right you may have earned it through services right you may have earned it through your property located outside india right which has been rented out right there may be a several source of earning foreign exchange right students there may be several sources of earning foreign exchange yes or no right if i am owning a flat overseas and it has been let out will i be able to get the foreign exchange over here in india yes as a rent right if i lended money uh, overseas right i am going to get the interest right if i have exported goods i am going to get the payment of my exports right if i have rendered certain services i have uh, went over there and provide some some kind of services over there i am going to get the remuneration or salary or a payment from overseas right so being a resident of india section 8 imposes on me what what section section 8 imposes upon me a statutory duty that in any case i should try to realize it repatriate it or surrender it over here in india as soon as possible without unnecessary delay if i have been caught with okay caught with a situation that i am dragging the payment i am making the payment getting delayed okay i would be subject matter of prosecution under fema what section eight states clearly c section eight of fema requires that person resident in india what is person resident of india that can be an individual that can be a firm that can be a company right right to make a make all reasonable efforts to realize and repartiate the foreign exchange due due or accrue as per the directions of rbi who has directed students who has directed energy my energy is drained okay please speak loudly okay so what what section 8 states section 8 states that rbi is clearly given a single direction to every person who is resident of india if he owns any any foreign exchange if some foreign exchange is due upon him right uh, due on him uh, or he has accrued some foreign exchange by whatever source he has earned that foreign exchange it is his duty that without unnecessary delay he has to get it realized as soon as possible after realization get it repatriated over here in india without any unnecessary delay and if it could not be repatriated it has been brought in cash then surrender it to the authorized person without unnecessary delay right what three things has been expected realization repartition and surrender from whom it has been expected resident of it do it is a statutory duty of nri no do it is a duty of a person who is not a permanent resident over here in india suppose one person has came over here in india for a uh, uh, for uh, an employment purpose he is going to stay over here in india for two and a half year he is not a permanent resident of india right do he is under an obligation under section 8 that he has to surrender entire foreign exchange or he has to hand over entire foreign exchange to the authorized person no the duty is being imposed only upon resident of india not on not on nri not on non permanent resident of india right right so whatever whenever you are studying a law you should understand the law very properly right so who is imposing duty section 8 is imposing duty through which it is imposing duty rbi who has given the direction rbi to whom the direction has been given resident of india what direction has been given do realize asap right do repartiate a asap right and do surrender asap 
डोंट लीड टू डिले डिले विल लीड टू वॉट कॉन्ट्रवेंशन ऑफ सेक्शन एट राइट राइट स्टूडेंट्स डन नाउ इन एक्सरसाइज ऑफ पावर ऑफ सेक्शन एट सेक्शन फोर्टी सेवन द फेमा द रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया issued fema realization repatriation regulation relating to manner of and period for realization repatriation uh, and surrender we know how to repatriate right we know there are three method of repatriation one is surrender and take the indian currency second is depositing the third one is settling the debts right right students next duty to person now c what the for, section for, uh, eight further states it clearly states if you have earned some foreign exchange it is your duty to re get it realized repatriate and surrender asap okay if you are finding it that concerned party is going to drag the matter what what you are expecting that you are not going to realize that amount very soon you have to initiate a legal action because that party is delaying the payment what they are doing they are playing the tactics they are not willing to make the payment or they are going to stop your payment or they are going to make your payment stuck over there okay you have realized by their activities that very soon they are not going to allow you to get the payment and take it over there in india okay you have realized it what they are creating a problem okay either they are going to digest your payment okay they are not going to give it to you at all they are going to try to become a bad debt okay or they are trying to drag or delay it okay in that case what is your duty it is your money right if someone is taking your money up from you what you will do you will initiate a legal action right immediately what you should file a legal case against them right see this is your legal entitlement it's your right to recover the sum of money due due upon them right it is due upon them and it is accrued to you right it's your legal entitlement that you can file a suit against them either you can take an arbitration action or you can go for conciliation or you get go can go for commercial settlement or you can go for <coughs> you know a legal case a suit you can be filed right so now in section 8 the reserve bank of india is imposing statutory duty on every resident of india if the payment is being disputed there is a chances that payment is going to be dragged okay there is a chances that payment is going to be <coughs> not made by them okay in that situation you have to immediately take what students legal action if you fail to take the legal action even that is a contravention of fema got my point students done so section 81 stating what do realize do repatriate do surrender asap without delay it is your statutory obligation right if you find it the payment is going to be dragged right if you find it he is not going to make the payment take the legal action if you even fail to take the legal action that is a con rbi will come the officer will come and will say why you haven't filed the case then if you are not having the proper answer you are the contraband right because how you can fail to recover your for because this is not an asset for you only right this is an asset for the government as well right so how you because of your lethargic uh, you know approach can create a loss of foreign exchange to the country got my point students done so imposing what statutory duty upon whom what is statutory duty first one is what realize repatriate or surrender asap without unnecessary delay finding making it delay is a contravention second if the payment is been stuck or the payment is not they are not willing to make the payment right then take the legal take the action whatever is the possible action you can take if you fail to take the action it is a contravention got my point students this is the two points what is written c a person in india to whom a person resident in india again on him right to whom any amount of foreign exchange is due or as accrued shall save as otherwise provided under the provision of this act or the rules and regulation made there under or with the general or special permission of rbi take all the reasonable steps to realize and repatriate in india such foreign exchange and shall in no case do refrain from doing anything do whatever you can do right or take refrain from taking any action that is a legal action right right student which has the effect of securing 
that the result by him of the whole or part of foreign exchange is going to be delayed that the foreign exchange ceases in whole or part ceases means is going to be bad debt right going to cease to recover right it may be noted that foreign exchange due means the amount which a person has right to receive or claim a foreign exchange got my point so section 8 has been divided into two part it is imposing what but a statutory obligation it is imposing a statutory obligation upon whom every person who is a resident of india if you have earned a foreign exchange that is without any dispute that is your asset that is your right that is your entitlement but it is in indian currency not in foreign exchange whatever foreign exchange is due to them it is your duty to get it recovered and hand over to the authorized person right it is your statutory duty to realize repatriate and surrender as soon as possible without unnecessary delay any delay will lead to <clears throat> lead to punishment right penalty right and if the you are uh, created you are getting into a situation where you find it like they are going to delay the payment or they are going to make your payment seized over there right they are not going to make the payment to you right in that case immediately take whatever legal action you can take right if you fail to take the legal action that is again a contravention got my point students done go through with the um, text then i'll proceed further done then what we have started with is the NC related provision, right, students? How many sections we have done, student? Section two is definition. Section five is current account transactions, है ना? Section six is capital account transaction. Authorized person. Section seven we haven't done, right? section 8 today we have done section 8 is what um duty of a person right duty of a person resident of india right right students done i have written it in a very simple language okay in my notes everything has been written see right students <clears throat> so should we start with the timeline now should we start with the timeline students we know manner of repartition see the institute is giving the same thing again and again right it has been covered in the definition of repartition right what is repartition we know right right students so we are skipping this and we are proceeding with the timeline so now i'm giving you a clear timeline uh, i have made that timeline very in a very uh, summarized manner see it has been made right but we are going to cover it from study material okay so period of surrender of realized foreign exchange means if you have realized the money from a foreigner right means to whom you are about to recover that that money the importer one right the tenant one right the debtor one right from whom you are going to realize it if you realize that foreign exchange and you are a non-individual what you are students you are resident of india but you are a non-individual non-individual means what you are a firm or you are a company you are not an natural person right so if you are an artificial person and you have realized the foreign exchange it is your statutory duty to surrender that exchange to the authorized person right within how many days see if you have earned that foreign exchange by virtue of any remuneration of services rendered means it is your earned foreign exchange right or it is being received by settlement of lawful obligation means you you got into a settlement deed with your debtor who is not willing to pay now he agreed to pay and he has paid the final sum of money to you take this and leave me right right students that is again your earned money right the third one is it is income from a set rent of a building right right students if it is received in inheritance means you have received it in succession right right students or it is in the form of gift then if it is your own earned currency then you have to surrender it within the period of seven days from the date of realization within how many days you have to surrender if you have received any foreign exchange from inheritance 
from gift don't write anything there is no need to write anything right i'm just trying to make the concepts clear so that you can write it later on although you have to write it down right tomorrow i'm going to check the notes right so just listen focus on the concept okay what they are stating what they are saying they are saying that it is the duty to surrender it is the duty to surrender of whom a resident of india who is an artificial person who is not a natural person if an artificial person has received gift or if an artificial person has received something in inheritance right or if he has realized the income due from an asset right or if it is his legal entitlement right whatever amount he has realized by virtue of these methods okay by virtue of these sources he has to surrender it within seven days from the date of realization how many days has been provided seven days for other than these cases he has been provided for 90 days for how many days students 90 days to be counted from the date of reset got my point got my point what i'm teaching you is now i'm making the second question of currency related provision first question we have covered is section 8 which is imposing two duties on a person resident of india it doesn't matter whether he is an individual or not right two duties are there realize repatriate and surrender as soon as possible dusra the second one is what take the legal action as soon as possible don't drag the matter right if it has been delayed or if it is be become bad debt it's your duty to answer right right students now they are sticking the timeline to individual and non-individual what is the time limit for a non-individual if you are a person resident of india who is a non-individual who is an artificial person who and who has earned the foreign exchange by his own dues right by way of business right by way of income from a set by way of inheritance or by way of gift right or by way of any legal source of income right in that case earned income should be surrendered within the period of seven days to be counted from the date of reset of income right other than that 90 days right right students right now if any person not being an individual again they are talking about artificial person what they are saying if being an artificial person okay you have organized an event overseas okay you have organized an event overseas now what you will do you will arrange for an exchange for your directors for your key managerial persons for any other person who is going to visit that event place right right students so you must have approached the authorized person you must have given him a, in, a indian currency right right you have given the amount in indian currency and you have taken uh, you have taken money um, for an exchange from authorized person right now if you have taken for an exchange from an authorized person and when your people will come back to india they'll come up with remainder amount right whatever is not been spent over there right whatever money they are bringing over here in india you have to get it surrendered within a period of students 90 days from the date uh, on the from the date they return back to india within how many days you have to surrender that figure within 90 days and if it is in the form of travelers check okay within 180 days if it is in the form of currency then within 90 days and if it is in the form of travelers check within 180 days how many days has been done four right the first one is self-realized self-owned and self-earned seven days other than self earned 90 days if you have taken money for your representative say board of director or kmp or any other person who has gone abroad for your work now they have returned back to india now there is some portion of money left with them okay in that case whatever exchange is left with them surrender it within the period of 60 90 days sorry within the period of 90 days if it is in the form of currency notes or coins right or if it is in the form of Travelers check within 180 days. Now, if you have drawn some foreign exchange for your own purposes, say for import bills, you have drawn foreign exchange from the authorized person. He has given you in the due course the foreign exchange. Now, it's been 60 days. You haven't used that fund or some part of the fund has not been used. Means some, some part has been left. You are being provided within a period of 60 days from the date of withdrawal. You have to surrender back it to the authorized person so any unused portion of foreign exchange withdrawn from an authorized person for any purpose other than travel abroad right 
for making the bill payments from here in it uh, from uh, over here in india right in that situation how you are being provided with how many days students 60 days 60 days is being provided for unspent foreign ex exchange to surrender got my point students so how many days are there five seven days 90 days then 90 days 180 days and 60 days got my point students now see the table this is for resident of india non-individual right seven days in case of self-realized exchange right self-earned exchange other cases 90 days right unspent foreign exchange right not used foreign exchange within 60 days right traveling back to india within 90 days right traveling back to india with traveler check 180 days right right students what i have done i have while explaining i have covered the 90 days point first and 60 days later but here it is written 60 days before 90 days later right so tell me if you have earned the foreign exchange the time period to surrender the foreign exchange is seven days for non-individual right if you have not earned but it is some from some other source other than specified source 90 days right if you have drawn the foreign exchange from an authorized person and it remains unused, you couldn't use the entire foreign exchange. You are being provided with, it, with, with a period of 60 days from the date of withdrawal, right? And if it is, and if it is what students, if it is like you have taken the foreign exchange overseas and you are returning back to India and there is some unspent portion of foreign exchange left with you in the form of currency and coins, 90 days right 90 days not 60 right and in the form of traveler check 180 days right right students done is there any confusion yes no for 60 days if you have withdrawn the money for paying the bills not for traveling overseas okay if you are withdrawn the money for traveling overseas, then you have to get it returned to the authorized person within 90 days from the day when you come back to India, right? But if you have withdrawn the money for paying the bills and it remains unutilized, then unutilized amount should be surrendered within the period of 60 days. Got my point? Yeah, traveling can be for any purpose. Got my point, students, done. So how many days? five different days are there seven days 90 days 60 days 90 days and 180 days right now uh, uh, revise it for, uh, fast first one is cell phone seven days cell phone gift or inheritance matlab something that legally belongs to you right the second one is other cases 90 days the third one is we cannot keep it in yesterday's lecture, uh, Gyaneshwari, in yesterday's lecture, I clearly told if you can hold the foreign exchange, then what would be the use of authorized person, right? Only authorized person is permitted to hold that foreign exchange, okay? Or even if you want to hold it, you can hold it in RFC account, right? But you cannot hold it in hard cash, right? Right, students, done. So you have to surrender it, okay? So you have to either surrender it and that surrender can be even in your account, no? You can hold it, right? Although when you need it, the government will give it to you because it belongs to you, right? Right, student, but you cannot hold it in hard cash. How much you can hold it in hard cash? 2,000 US dollar. Yesterday I told you, right? Right, students, done. So within how many days you have to surrender? Seven days from the date of reset, right? Then 90 days from the date of reset, 60 days from the date you return back to India, right? Dates are different, right? Then within nine, uh, within 60 days, no, 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 I made a mistake. Within 60 days from the date of withdrawal from the authorized person, if it remains unspent. Within 90 days from the date you return back to India. Within 180 days from the date when you return back to India, right? Right, students, done. And for individual, see, for individual, what is written? For individual, in all cases, this rule is 180 days, okay? For resident individual, a resident individual is provided with how many days, beta? 180 days in all cases, okay? In all cases, he has been provided with 180 days. Got my point, students, done. 
and the last provision is this rule is not applicable when you are holding foreign exchange belonging to Nepal and Bhutan because they are not getting value over here in India right right we are not allowed to make the payment in foreign exchange and if we are having in our hand Nepal or Bhutan ka currency that is not going to be regulated by this rule okay this rule is not applicable on Nepal and Bhutan currency got my point students done done Ab now only one point of currency related provision is pending that is possession okay see these two points are pending then your exchange uh, yeah currency related provision will be over right right students see now you can go through with the notes okay go through once Is it visible now? Done. So we have done with how many questions now? This is eight questions that has been covered. Thirteenth questions, hai na? Now what I'll do? I'll add these questions as well, right? What was the fourteenth question that we have done? Section eight, right? Right, student. Section eight is what? Mm -hmm. Duty of a resident of India, whether he is individual or he is a non-individual. There are two duties, right? First duty is to ASAP, right? The second duty is to take action, right? Right, students, done. Now, the 15th question is what, students? 15th question is time limit of surrender, right? Right, students, hai na? time limit of surrender for non-individual, right? Right? How many time limits are given? Five. Seven days. Ninety days. Sixty days. Then ninety days and one eighty days. Right? Sixteenth is time limit for individual. Right? An exception. Right? Right, students. And we have done with how many sections, students? sections and schedules right right student section one is applicability of FEMA right whenever there is an involvement of foreign exchange FEMA will come into the picture it doesn't matter whether it is a commercial transaction non-commercial transaction or it is a personal nature, uh, nature transaction if you are making payment if you are receiving payment or if you are receiving the payment on behalf of a person resident outside India today we have covered right or if you are transferring foreign exchange or foreign security, you have to follow FEMA, right? Right, students, section one. Section two is what? Definitions, right? Section three, we haven't done, right? No, na. Section three, section four, section five, we have done, right? That is what? Current account transactions, right? Section six, we have done. Yes, we, we, we are about to do it, right? That is capital account transaction, right? Will you be able to distinguish between current and capital account transaction? Done. Then uh, LRS scheme we have done, right? Right. Then what we have done? Schedule 1, Schedule 2, Schedule 3. What is Schedule 1, 2, 3? One is prohibited, right? What, uh, second is permissible with GOI, right? Right. GOI. Or here permission of RBI, right? Then we have done with? section 8 what is section 8 the duty of a person right then section 10 that is authorized person i hope today we will cover section 9 as well section 9 is about possession of foreign exchange okay students it is about what possession of foreign exchange chain is authorized person right chain is authorized person right fema is a topic that you need to intensely understood each and every concept try to learn the section number i'll make you learn in the class itself try to learn the limits limits how many limits we have done with students 250k usd right for lrs limit and for permissible capital account a current account transaction right right students we have done with a further limit of 1% or 5 million, right? 
right for for donation right right students then 5% or 25k whichever is higher for commission on properties right we have done with then 10 million for consultancy project of infrastructure right we have done with 1 million for other consultancy project right then other right and we have done with 100k or 5% right for pre-incorporation expenses right students right so if institute is going to ask any question from any paragraph whatever is being covered in the class you guys will be capable enough to write the answer right so should i give the break of 10 minutes now <laughs> i'm giving you a break of 10 minutes then we'll go ahead i think one one and a half hour lecture will uh, no hardly i think one hour 15 minutes lecture will left okay so we'll cover the further topics. Okay, students.